Father, Amen. thank you for an opportunity to come before you, to have fellowship with you, to love you, to enjoy your presence. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for grace. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lift up your hands and thank the Holy Spirit once more. Thank you. You can have your seat. Psalm 26 verse 8. Look at your neighbor and tell him, prophesy to your neighbor, your life will never be the same. Are you prophesying well? Tell your neighbor, your life will never be the same. Get up from where you were and walk to somebody and prophesy to the person. Amen. Kindly have your seat. Psalm 26, verse 8. Psalm 26, verse 8. I love your sanctuary, Lord, the place where your glory shines. So the church is where the glory of God shines. And you've come to a place where the glory of God upon your life is about to shine. Amen. Your amen is too weak. On Thursday, one I was talking about how to receive from God when you come to church. I made mention about um, the Bible declares that you have come on to Mount Zion where there are innumerable. You have come on to Mount Zion, the city of the living God. Now, the revelation of the place you go to determine the manifestation of the place. Now, if you go to a hospital, you expect something. You expect that a doctor will appear. You expect that a nurse will appear. And that's the same revelation you must carry today. You know, David said that I love your sanctuary. If you don't love church, you can't have the glory. Because the Bible says, I love your sanctuary, Lord. The place, the place. There are places the glory of God is revealed. There are places you will encounter God. There are places God reveals himself. God does not, now he is God and he is sometimes, we make it look like in as much as he is God, he has all the power to do everything. As much as he has all the power to do everything and anything, he has set principles that governs his power. Hallelujah. And that is why even with the crazy personnel in Ghana, as much as they have been assigned to take care of Ghanaians, when there is an issue, there is a place you can locate them. Isn't it? Yeah? And David said, I love, can we read it loud and clear, read it on top of your voice? Because some of you, you don't really love God, but you want the glory of God. You want the glory of marriage. You want the glory of academical breakthrough. Listen to me very carefully. Many of us love the glory, but we don't love the one who gives the glory. Many of you here want to travel, so you want God to help you to travel, but you don't really love God. It's two different things. You love the things God can give, but you don't love the giver. So we are using God to get the things we want. So the moment we get the things we want, that is it. And that is why many people travel abroad and they don't have anything to do with church. Many people get married, they don't have to. They tell you they are busy because they only came to church, wanted to pray so that the glory will shine. But David now turns the thing outside down. He said, I love your glory. I love your sanctuary. Lord, that simply means, if, now, if a man can love a place, that simply means that the love he has for the person who owns the place is stronger to the point it has affected the place the person owns. And you must graduate from that level of loving the glory and not the sanctuary or the Lord. I love your sanctuary, Lord. The place where your glory, the place where testimonies take place. I don't love testimonies, but I love you beyond testimonies. And that is the point you must come to. Whether God answers you or not, you are, your love for God is, does not go down, does not die. I pray for you that God's power would uphold you. 
and Paul said, what can separate me from the Lamb of God? I pray that a generation will rise that regardless of the situation, you will not bow. You will not bow. You will not bow. Now the church has become so weak to the point that any little arrow from hell, we bow. Any little wind from hell, we bow. Any storm, we bow. Any issue, we bow. But I pray for a generation that regardless of what you go through, regardless of what comes after you, you will not bow. South, I will not bow. The disciples who laid the foundation of our faith in the church, they laid down a foundation of sacrifice. They went through a lot and we are enjoying their sacrifice. We just want to see things happen. Kira Kasaya. Yesterday, I went to see my father and the Lord on, on Friday, came back on Saturday. And I was supposed to minister the man of God for his latest conference. So tired. I was so tired. Because traveling on Friday, coming back on Saturday, I mean, six hours in and now is, 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 a, is a bit of a long journey. And when I came straight into the service, Stood on my feet, preached for two hours. Then from there, one of the sons of the house was celebrating his birthday. So I wanted to surprise him from there. You see, if it were to be you, you would have been complaining. That you are tired. You see, when you love God, eh, there are some things you don't even utter. Some of you, the statement you even make is a proof that you don't love God. I'm telling you. You easily get tired. A rain can stop somebody from not coming to church. Rain. It's not 20 minutes. Mama, sorry. You are, you are a joker. You've not seen God yet. Maybe probably you don't even understand who God is. Maybe you probably you've been preached to that God gives visas. He doesn't give you a visa. Even Malams give visas. Anything God gives, Malam can give it. I'm telling you the truth. But there is something God can give that Malams can give. That's love. <laughs> is it not amazing that Malams would rather tell you to bring before they give, but Jesus came to give for us to get So when I came, the pastor said, we are waiting for you. I said, okay. I told him for come and pick me up. From Tejas to right from the bus with my slippers. Went straight to Olive's Retreat Center. Stood on my feet. Preached as though I just came from a prayer room. Give him a microphone. What happened? Were there testimonies? A guy has had glaucoma, something on his eye. Sorry. Yes, please. He said there was a foreign object. On his eyes uh -huh. for five years. For five years. Yes, Simple prayer. Open it. You see, maybe probably it was not the prayer. God is saying, don't clap. God is saying, my servant, you are tired, but you still went on. That simply means if I had not gone, the guy eyes wouldn't have been healed. Five years. He said, man of God, it just disappeared. I can't see the thing on my eyes anymore. Yes, now, you see, many of you are clapping at the glory, but you're not clapping at the love I had for God. So when I said, when I came out of the car and I went straight, nobody clapped. But when I spoke about healing, you are clapping. Now you see where our attention is. That's how the church is. After that, I told him, let's go to the mall. Let's get him a cake. Because he went to preach at the place. That's, these are the things I want to hear. His birthday, he said, I want to stand outside and preach. Went to preach, I said, because of that, in as much as I'm tired, we drove from here to the mall, got a cake for him, straight to go from from there, straight to my room, pray till fall. You were a joke if you want to be used in this generation. Woke up and I went to chase some leaders. Why are you still here? I was telling Junior something. Right now before I preached. To me, some of us, we are not too serious. To me, they... they oh. You know, when I was a pastor, I was on Saturday. I told him, Papa, I'm leaving. He said, wait for me. One hour, he, he, he still hadn't come out. I was waiting. He came out and he was, you can see his heart was burning. He said, there is a coming move of God, but if you don't do this and this and this, you can't be part. God can just push you away and then use somebody else. Just like the days of Jesus, when he wanted to feed 5,000 people, the disciples could not provide bread. There was a small boy. And Jesus said, I will ignore the 12 disciples and use the small boy. I'm telling you, if you think your position cannot be taken, I'm telling you, God will use a madman to preach. Madman. If you don't praise me, I will even command the stones. That means that God can use anything if the people he created for. 
a purpose are not fulfilling their purpose. God can use you. So imagine a stone replacing you. A prophet was meant to see. He was so soaked with greed and love for money to the point that it blinded him from seeing. And God says, since your love for me has now disappeared, I will use a donkey to talk to you. That's so deep. The man loved money to the point that his ears and eyes got blind. Got deaf, got blind. And God said, my prophet, then I will use your donkey you sit on to fulfill your purpose. I will use it to speak to you. It will shock you that God can even use your ex to talk to you. James 1.23, quickly. I just told the people I was preaching to yesterday, even if God has not given me a car, I'm okay. Even if God has not given me a house, I'm okay. Anything God has not given, I'm okay. I pray that I will never get to that place where things will take their place. I'm telling you, if it will take me from God, it should never come to me. If traveling will take me far from God, it should never come. Anything that will take me far from God, it should never come. It should never come. Because anything that takes you from God will take you to hell. Mark it, write it. Anything that takes you from God will take you to hell. Any breakthrough that takes you from God, you came to school, that's taking you from God, it will take you to hell. You traveled, it took you from God, it will take you to hell. You had a car, it took you from God. Now you are so busy, God has given you a business breakthrough, it is not taking you from God, it will take you to hell. Anything that does not push you to God will push you to hell. Anything. Any relationship that does not push you towards God, it will push you out of God. Judas, do you love Jesus or you love money? He was Jesus' accountant. He was a follower of Jesus, but he was not following Jesus. He was following the money Jesus had. At the end, we saw it. It is always the end that justifies. Every one of us can claim we love God until God gives you a breakthrough. You will turn into a lesbian. Yeah, some of you think you're, you're not a lesbian. You wait. Anything, anything, anything. If my marriage will, will take me far from God, I should rather remain single. I'm not joking today. Oh. I'm not joking. We've been joking for some time. Many Christians are backsliding. Why are you not coming to church? Because I didn't pass my exams. Look at this. No, I mean, some senseless excuses. My mother has died. Now who told your mother was going to live forever? My father has died. Am I not preaching? We give some excuses that when God hears, it shocks him. For if you listen, if you just listen and don't obey, it is like looking at your face in the mirror and not doing nothing to improve your appearance. Go on. You see yourself in the mirror and walk away and forget what you look like. Who has ever looked at him or herself in the mirror and walked away forgotten how you look like? Is it, is, it, is it possible? It's not possible. Because already you know that you are wearing a red tie. But the Bible says that if you hear the word, go to the verse 23 quickly. For if you just listen, there are two words here. If you just listen and... So that means it is good you listen to the word, but the best is to obey. I heard a musician say he was born into a Christian home. And somebody wrote on the comment section, did Jesus give birth to you? Nobody was born into a Christian home. Nobody. You're not born into a Christian home. You were born into a religious home. You grew up to know that your father was a Christian. But it, to become a Christian is a decision. When one comes to a point whereby you realize the value, like you come to a point and no, no, I have to accept Jesus. You make that personal decision. It's not a family decision. He told you, he said, I'm going to heaven. I'm going to catch you on the net. I'm going now, some of us have come to Sunday service to listen to the word, but we don't obey. And the Bible says that you are just like someone who looks himself in the mirror, leaves the place, and forgets what he or she saw in the mirror. Verse 25. But if you keep looking steadily into God's perfect law, that law that sets you free, the word of God has not just come to take away, it sets you free. It sets you free from poverty, from sickness. But it can only set you free when you permit it through obedience. Hearing it alone is like going to a pharmacy shop and get a medicine and put it in your hands and expect to be healed. Is it possible? It's impossible. 
And that is why people are still shocked. In Tokyo, so in it, you sue my knee. Have you heard that statement before? So that means even that, that simply means that the people of the world have this understanding when you come to church for some time, it should affect your attitude. But there are people who come listen and don't obey. Trust and obey for the listen. I am a man of God. I've been anointed by God. Yesterday we saw miracles. I told you, I, I feel like when I come here now, I feel like the atmosphere becomes heavy for me. I can't flow as I have been anointed to flow yesterday. That's there. It was so easy. So easy. Miracles were happening. That's scary. In my entire state, oh, I just stood, I just stood like, Father, thank you. I was so tired. Miracles were happening. But here, I feel like familiarity is becoming too much. And yesterday, I made mention to her that, like, the way the miracles happened, I could have done, hey, the, and maybe the atmosphere will become hushious, and people feel like, hey, is that when the man of God frowns and do gymnastics, that's when the man of God is anointed. And I told her that Jesus doesn't work that way. He does things, I mean, simple but miraculous. And I told the people that I can be smart. Ask them, they were so excited. I said, For what did you learn? What did you learn? She said, Oh, when I, I mean, the moment I started preaching, the atmosphere became, li- became lively. The people were responding. They were, it's like they were hearing the things I was sharing with them for the first time. So excited. Many of us, we are not grateful to the word that can change your world. We don't place value on it, we don't place value on the word of God. We just come to church, dance, and go back. And that is why our lives are not changing. Now, many of you know the truth of God's word, but few of us are obeying it. Who here doesn't know that fornication is bad? But how many people are not abstaining from it? Who here doesn't know that stealing is bad? Now, we know the truth, but we are not permitting the truth to set us free. It is not enough to know the truth. It is when you permit the truth. When you permit now look at this scripture. John chapter 5 verse 9 to 13. Quickly. So I'm hearing the words I'm about to preach to you. Don't just hear them. Some of you are to a well place. And people don't even know whether you're a Christian or a Muslim, whether you're a Hindu or Buddhist. Because per your attitude, it doesn't show. At home, you don't respect your parents. You saw them come and sit and dance. John chapter 5, quickly. John chapter 5 verse 1. Uh-huh. Afterward, Jesus returned to Jerusalem for one of the Jewish holy days. I'm going to show you two natures of Jesus. Okay? Oh, quickly, quickly, quickly. Inside the city, near the ship gate, was the pool of Bethesda. Read it. Okay, let's read the whole church. One to go. Read huh? Inside the city, near the ship gate, was the pool of Bethesda with five covered porches, crowds of sick people, blind lame or paralyzed lay on the porches one of the men lying there had been sick for 38 years when jesus saw him and knew how long he had been ill he asked him would you like to get well so here you realize that jesus was concerned about the physical state of the guy right yes. and asked him do you want to get well so that simply means that jesus is concerned about your physical state do you want to be healed? Do you want to prosper? Do you want to travel? Now, Jesus is showing the side, another side of the ministry. When Jesus saw him and knew how long he had been, Jesus knows how long you are struggling. Jesus knows how long you are dying to marry. He knows everything about your physical needs. Continue. Let's want to go. Uh-huh. Who healed the man? This is the name is so sweet. Who healed the man? Jesus. Loud and clear. Who healed the man? Jesus. As we are shouting, Jesus, you are healed now. Your yours are broken now. Jesus. The limitations are broken now. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Instantly, the man was healed. He rolled up the mat and began walking. And this miracle happened on a Sabbath day. Verse 10, quickly. Sit down. So the Jewish leaders objected. They said to the man, who killed you? You can't walk on a Sabbath day. It is illegal to carry. Uh-huh. He replied, the man who healed me said to me, pick up your sleeping mat and walk. Verse 12. Who said such a thing? They demanded. Uh-huh. The man didn't know, for Jesus had disappeared into the crowd. Uh-huh. 
But after Jesus found him in, now this is the part I want you to take note of. Who healed him in the beginning? Now, Jesus is about to show us another aspect of his ministry. Now, we are serving a good Jesus who is interested in your physical life. Anything that will bring you comfort, Jesus is interested in it. But also, Jesus is not just interested in making you travel or making you prosper. After he healed the man, but after Jesus found him in the... Now, want to listen, want to go. Wait, Jesus found him in the temple and, and, but I thought the healing was enough. Are you getting my message? I thought the healing was, because if you have healed a man of 38 years condition, are you not supposed to be excited, Jesus? Why do you see him again and signal another message to him? Tell him, that, tell somebody there is another message. After Jesus that is your, some of you, the way you can lie, eh? even God fears you. I'm telling you. I'm, eh? you see, let, me, let me show you how close you are to the devil when you easily lie. You are very close to the devil. When you easily lie. When you easily form stories. You are very close to the devil. Why? The Bible says he is the father of all lies. So that means the moment you start lying, it's a signal that you are a child of the devil. And you shall know that now, any man who stands for the truth is a sign that you are a child of God. When you easily lie, it means that the spirit of God is not in you. It is the spirit of the devil. Why? He is the father of all lies. If you easily lie to your classmates, you easily lie to... Some of you can even lie to me in my face and I know you are lying and they, and they are confident. I'm like, hey, he is the father of all lies. And the Bible says, he has been lying from the beginning. And he's still lying. So that means that anytime I see a lie, I've seen Satan. After Jesus found him, found him what healed. So after Jesus finds you prosperous, there is another message he has for you. So that simply means that he's not only interested in you getting prosperous, he's interested in another thing in your life. So there are two things Jesus is interested in. Not just to break you through, to travel to the UK, to travel to Amsterdam, to travel or to have the first class. It is something he will do. But there is another message he will tell you after he has done something. But after Jesus found him in the temple, he said to him, now that you are well... Now that you are prospered, now that you are healed, now that you are married, now that you have a breakthrough, now that, I mean, things are moving for you. I have another message for you. Stop. Jesus is not only interested in your healing, my brother. If you are flirting with girls, stop it. After Jesus found him in the temple, he told the man again, now that you are healed, now that you are prospered, now that you have a car, now that you have traveled, stop. So the same Jesus who healed the man is now warning the man. Now let me say this. It doesn't matter what God gives you. Something can take it from you. Onibane to me, siano kwain. I'm telling you, according to the word of the Lord. Now that you are well, stop sinning or something even worse, or something even worse may even happen to you. What causes things to happen to people is not the devil. It's when we sin, it permits the devil. Look on the board. Now that you are well, now that you are academically sound, now that things are okay, see to it that you don't allow it to deceive you that you are not permitted to do what you want to do. Now that you are in the university, it does not permit you to fool around and club around and have sex around. Mess up in the name of now I'm in the university. In the name of Now that you are in the university, now that your business is doing well, stop that means stop going to places where sin is entertained. You are not permitted to be in the club. You are not permitted to be having sex when you are not married. You are not permitted to be doing anything which is against the integrity of God's word. You are not permitted. It's not a suggestion. It's a command. He says stop sinning or something worse. And that's why we see people rise and they come down. Do you know why? When they rose up, they didn't know that there was a principle that governs the blessings of God. And the principle is sin should be far from you. Sin. 
Most of our parents don't know this key. They get prosperous, they start coming to church. And they now tag themselves as busy people. I don't have time. Who did you offer the cross? Sorry. Who told you that God needs your money? I beseech you, therefore, brethren, that you present your body. If your body is not in check, forget about your resources. God is not in need of your money. Who told you God needs your money to build? A man is building a city for God without a church loan. He has not even taken an offering to build the ark, Bishop Edebo. Recently, he has bought another private jet. A man of God has three universities. No bank loan, nothing. Who is blessing in God? When a man who pleases the Lord, his enemies will even be at peace with him. Stop sinning! God giving you a breakthrough is not a guarantee for you to do what you want. You trusted God for your phone and he has given you the phone. You are now using the phone to do hookup. You trusted God for a car. Now that car has now become a sex machine car. Now you see, now it is like the things God gives us permits us to sin. You trusted God to travel. Now going to church is a problem. You trusted God for the university. Now coming to church is a problem. In the name of half classes. Stop. Or something worse may even come upon you. So that means there is something worse awaiting for every man who sins. The same Jesus who blessed is now warning. The same Jesus that will bless you is warning you. Stop stealing or something worse. I have come to this revelation that any man you steal from, you can never be greater than that man. Let me repeat it. Any man you steal from, if you are working with your master, you are looking after somebody's shop, and if you steal from them, you can never cross that line. There are so many rich men in Ghana can't cross the borders of Ghana. When we are talking about most influential people, haven't you realized that most Ghanaians are not seen on the board? But when a man's ways pleases God, he makes the world like a carpet. Do you know that most genuine men of God are known more than even ministers of Ghana? Prime ministers, whatever, even. Bishop Doug is known all over the world. Now, when he gets to the airport, presidents come to meet him. A man of God. A man of God. After Jesus found him in the temple, that means Jesus sees people in the temple and he knows what they are doing. You are in church and you look so simple. You look so gentle, but he knows you are masturbating. He knows what you are doing. Why did he find him? Is he not in church? And is he not in church? He instructed him. So that means there are, there are many folks in church who are doing things, say things. Let me give you another scripture. John 8, 11. How many of you are following my message? My daddy, my dad. I see an angel here. Your beloved is preaching. I will be preaching and preaching and preaching for the rest of eternity. You will hate me for the truth, but in heaven you will celebrate me for the truth. May nobody ever give me a car to the point that I can't tell you the truth. Me, build me a house, I'll tell you the truth. Give me a wife, I'll tell you the truth. Give me gold, I'll tell you the truth. Because I've come to know that there is a better place than the car you are giving me, heaven. I will not let your car make me miss my heaven. So we have seen a story whereby after Jesus healed the guy, Jesus told the guy, go and what? See no, if not something worse will come upon you. So it is not enough to be healed in church. What seals your healing is what? Your ability to abstain from sin. It seals your healing. Or something worse. Now, can I ask a question? What is worse than being crippled for 38 years? You've not, I've, I, didn't, I intentionally didn't mention it. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Eddie, come. Be crippled on the platform. In Jesus' name, you will not be crippled, but as an example. Can I see him? When he said, huh? David, we are shameful. Now, this is how the man was working for 38 years. 38. And Jesus asked him, why you know he said, I have no man. That simply means that men even didn't want to have anything to do with him. 
Do you know what it means to, to live for 38 years and no man wants to have anything to do with it? Do you know why men didn't want to have anything to do with him? He was pooping on himself. He was smelling. He was looking tattered. Like, I mean, this guy's in suit, so he's not a 30 year old crippled man. But he was crippled. No, he couldn't change. Now, it's not easy to change a crippled man for 38 years. Imagine urinating on yourself, pooping. Then Jesus comes and heals him. And now, Jesus walks into church. And Francis will say, oh, you are here. It's good you are in church. Because many people, when they are healed, they go back to their boyfriends. I have seen many people leave church and they enter their boyfriend's room. Babe, I'm on my way. Say something happy Saturday. It's in Saturday. Jesus held him and healed him. Was it not enough? So some of you, Jesus will hold your hands and give you a passport. And give you a visa. And give you a wife. I am not preaching against good things. I am showing you the revelation. Jesus is able to do exceedingly. He is a good Jesus. He wants you to have a car. He wants your marriage to do well. He wants your business to do well. And I prophesy in the name of Jesus. May you begin to do well. May your academics begin to do well. May your health begin to do well. Shout, I shall do well. In the name of Jesus. So I am not denying the fact that Jesus doesn't want you to, he wants you to do well. He wants you to travel. I see visas being released. Receive your visas. Receive your breakthroughs. Receive your scholarships. In the name of Jesus, international doors are open. Why are doors open? Because Jesus wants them to be open. But after Jesus opens the door, he will come back to you again. See that you see no more. Or something worse. That means if you were poor and Jesus made you rich, and now you realize that you are using the riches to chill girls, you become poorer like a rat living in a gutter. Do you know what Jesus did to Nebuchadnezzar? He was bragging, I have built all these things. And Jesus said, Go and spend holidays in, in the bush for seven years. A king, one of the most powerful kings ever. When he started bragging, God made him an animal. Is it you that God can tell you a monkey? If God made a king an animal, is it you? You are smart, so you don't respect God. What being you know? A Kenya is smart, so it's like ask Uba Badam. Who will say Ucha Kota and Maumbo? But Onum Bros and Ere. Do you know how God will make you go mad with all your intelligence? He will increase the volume of intelligence. Not Tiafas. You are in a training school for madness. I see many people when they are smart in academics, they think they don't need God. Until you are done with your first class. Now, when say first class, a grace. I'm not also saying don't get first class. Get it. Get it, but get God first. So now, Eddie is married. He is a CEO. He is a general manager. He has traveled to the UK, Canada, whatever. Whatever Jesus gives you, when he meets you once again, there is one thing he will tell you. Make sure that you don't let this thing make you sin. If not, something worse. So imagine a crippled man being raised from the dead, from crippled. Now he's and say, if you sing back here, Something worse. What is worse than being crippled for 38 years? That means there are worse situations. Worse. We just cut off fried rice here now. Fried rice. I cook on them. In the brass, I na ubo mi chedem. So from me ba insurance wati insurance. Now that all the I cook on them no ne sira no ebi ano no mpeni sira so for so for insurance. Me me ba ma oyamasho. Ne inchina ma ko nyari inti no ona mana tu yishe wa otim. Verse 1. Jesus returned to Mount Olives. Now look at another story. Continue. The early next morning, he was back again to the temple. Jesus likes going to church. If you don't like church, it means you are not a Jesus addict. Jesus was back to the temple. A crowd soon gathered and sat down and he taught them. When Jesus appeared, they gathered. How come you are forced to church? Jesus said, Oh, Jerry, you are saying, Oh, you are saying, Oh, you are saying, 
The people will say, Lord, if you bless me, I will shock you. You are already shocking God by not even getting up to church. As he was speaking, the teachers of the religious law, Pharisees, brought a woman who had been caught in the art of what? In the art of what? In the art of what? Now, you realize that what brings sickness and disease into our bodies is sin. Jesus told the man, if you go back and sin again, something worse. That means that what put the man in the situation 38 years ago was a sin. Maybe he committed an abortion. And later on, God repaid him back. As he was speaking, the teachers of the law, religious law, and Pharisees brought him a woman that was caught in the act. The woman was having sex with another man when she was not married. And they brought the woman that we have caught her. Some of you have not been caught that, so you are still having sex. God will cut away your penis as a young man. I cause your penis if you fornicate. Whether you shout or not, I, I, I prophesy. But on your honeymoon, that very day, twins will be entering your body. If we're led to. And what the other body teacher, my anchor. When the jack man of the man enters your body, say, get it. It's like super glue. It will never come out. And all the have you seen such before? One guy went and slept with another man's life. No, no, the man has already went to a malam. He has been told that the wife is cheating. Like, but he didn't believe it. And the malam gave him a padlock. And he padlocked the thing and buried it. The man came for a round. About one. They went one. The lady was resting. <laughs> and then was shaking me. You know, Satan, he knows how to make you feel things. Second round. Third one. The padlock. The sweetness has not been turned into screaming. Do you know what they did? They covered them and they put them on the truck. And they were pushing them. Who has seen that video? They were pushing them. In the whole city. Oh, oh, oh. You will be caught in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, you have always heard me. Anyone who have with you, I am bowing my knees to you. Anyone who hears this word and refuse to turn their ways, may they be caught. As they are planning to abort the baby, may the baby touch the medicine. You take the abortion pill, the baby will touch. Or say, no, they They send the cutlass to cut, cut, cut. The baby, the baby will put a leg like this. Father, in the name of Jesus, let anyone who have made you so a man to say, let them be caught in this prayer. Because some of you, if we, it's like God, if He doesn't force you into the fish belly, you may rebel. If not for God allowing the fish to also be kind of mm, man, I don't care. I don't care. Let me tell you the truth. When you marry, there are two things about sex. We have something called pleasurable sex and dutiful sex. Many of you don't know that you are only enjoying the pleasure aspect, which is not the thing. When you marry, you will see your naked wife. It's as if you have seen TV pool. I'm telling you. You ask your father, when was the last time you saw your father kiss your mother? Since you were born. Huh? Never. Huh? Never. But you see how you are rushing to kiss? The thing you are rushing to do, no? ask yourself, have you ever seen your mother do it before? Satan is a bastard. Don't let Satan deceive you. Let me preach. As he was speaking, they brought a woman they had caught in the act of the this he why now if now this alone should let you know that God is against fornication. Yeah, I don't believe in fornication. Huh? Huh? They brought the woman in the act of committing the sin and they put her in front of the crowd. The first thing that fornication brings is disgrace. 
They put them in front of the crowd. Disgrace is there. The spirit of disgrace. Will, you see, I'm, I know some women who work hard, though. But do you know why they don't see their sweat? They don't see anything. It's there. In as much as they are working and they are getting results, they don't see the glory of the results because the spirit of disgrace is following them. Uh-huh. And they said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of adultery, sleeping with somebody, having sex. Who, and the law of Moses commands that when you are caught in the act, you should be stoned to death. Thank God that Jesus came to die to abolish this law. Kenya Saka Mubi, your papa Mutina Matiano. I was saying, I said, I told him, I know. I'm reading the Bible to you. He said, The law of Moses, that means what you gave to Moses on the mountain. You said, Now God Himself said, When you see somebody having sex with somebody who she's not married to, stone that person to death. That means carry stones, beat the person, and say, You have caught an arm, arm robber. Why? Arm robbers steal things that does not belong to them. Fornication is stealing. The law of Moses says, Stone her. What do you say? I thank God that Jesus came to die. Yes, I come on. And shut down so I mean would you have been alive according to the law of Moses? Would you have been alive by now? Verse 6. They were trying to trap Jesus into saying something he could use against him. But Jesus said, I was the same person who gave the law that such a person should be killed. But now I've had mercy. Let such a person pardon his ways. Now look at this. When you read this part, you'll be a certain ah, you have to go and see a new morning tea. But Jesus stooped down and wrote in the dust with his what? On the mountain. Jesus wrote, God wrote on the finger on the tablet to Moses. But Jesus rewrote the law because grace has come. Verse 7. They kept demanding an answer. That means that they wanted to stone the woman to death. But Jesus said, I've shown her mercy. So he stood up again and said, All right, stone her. But let those who have never sinned first of all throw the stone. That means anytime you sin, you are meant to be stoned to death. So do you know what Jesus was saying here? Jesus is saying that it is not only a fornicator who is meant to be killed when he sins, any other sin demands to be stoned to death. If you claim you have no such thing, throw your stone. My daddy, my dad, Kaya, your beloved is preaching. <laughs> I will be preaching and preaching and preaching for the rest of eternity. My lover, my love, Charles is preaching. I will be. Then he stooped down again and wrote in the dust. Verse 9 quickly because of time. When the accusers heard this, they all slipped away one by one. Beginning with the oldest until only Jesus was left in the middle of the crowd. Look at the woman was alone with Jesus. So naked. <laughs> Disgrace for me. Even if Jesus forgives you, can you go and wipe away the image of your nakedness in the minds of people? Hey? In as much as God will forgive you of the sin, eh? Not to commit it because, in as much as God forgives you, men don't forget. Men don't forget. Remember your ex, he still has an image of your breast in his mind. So you are marrying a new guy, but your breast has already enjoyed the kick. Yeah. And it, the sad thing is about five guys seeing your nakedness. It, it, you know, it's, it's a shame. Like five guys knows you. So there's nothing new. So when they come to your wedding, they may take a picture with you, but they are seeing their mind. Yeah, I have the gallery. Yeah. That's the shame of. You may think, oh, God has glorified me. Yes, God will glorify me by giving you a husband to marry. But the truth is, God will not go and brush off your image from their mind. You take a picture and say, babe, is he okay? I'm flying with them. No, by a naked or Is this sexy? You beg the ones who did iPhone to help you to search. I don't know the kind of foolishness that has entered our generation. That the only way to prove your love is to send a picture. If you think I'm joking, eh? even when you were young, your parents, when they're taking a picture of you, they put you on pampers. They don't even take your naked picture. They put you on pampers. And they put some white, white the beads. And there's a pampers. Or breast, and they say, I have supply with the internet, you know. So they just, but realize that even when you're growing, they'll dress you where they take you to the studio. But now we undress ourselves. We are wiser than our parents. No, but Bessie, babe. 
One day, your child will come and see your video and say, Mommy, is it you? If you are like that, say mercy. Hey! May God show you mercy. Now look at this. This is the part I want to encourage you with. When Jesus stood up again and said to you, where want to go? And the lady with the nakedness said what? No. Huh? Huh? That means that you have been caught in the sin, but I will not condemn you in this one. But if you go, in, go and say no, so he delivers you from sin so that you can walk in glory, not for you to go and continue sinning. So the first one, he healed the man and said, go and sin no more before something worse comes upon you. Then he sees another lady who was caught in the web of sin. One was sick as a result of sin and one was being disgraced as a result. Hey? Let me say this. Through sin, eh, many things come to a man. Romans 6, 23. The wages of sin is what? Do you know that there are several ways of dying? There are, how many of you know there are several ways of dying? Do you know malaria can kill? And do you know malaria can enter your body through sin? Do you know malaria is a spirit? It's a demon? Maybe one of the Kumasi pray, I will teach on the healing in his wings. And I will explain to you that every sickness that has a name has a demon behind it. Every sickness that has a name, tuberculosis, what again? Gonorrhea. There is a, now, yesterday the guy said he has glaucoma, the eyes. When I prayed in the name of Jesus, there was something on the aisle. He said, when he moves, he sends that. Answer. When I prayed in the name, the demon checked that. The demon that put it there checked that. In the name of Jesus, any sickness in any part of your body, as you lay your hands there, I command it, out. Cut out! Cut out! Cut out! Your messes are flowing. The lamp in your breast is melting. That demon behind the condition, I command it to cut out. My daddy, my dad. For the wages, for the continuation of sin is what? When you continue sinning, it results in death. Like you sin and you dodge. I say, For the wages of is what? But the free gift of God is eternal life. The moment you stop sinning, you start living in life. Suddenly, academically, you become sound. Suddenly, hey, let me say this. Hey. Do you know why Satan makes you fornicate? It interrupts your marriage. One day I will teach the depth of fornication. Sin can bring sickness and sin can bring disgrace. One way to stop being disgraced is to stop sinning. One way to stop sickness from coming to you is to stop sinning. Why? The Bible declares in the book of Job, when Job was enjoying the covenant of God, no sickness was able to enter. Now look at this. No! She said, now the Lord just reminded me of a prophecy I was supposed to give on Friday. Now there is somebody here Sometimes you smell around you like a goat, like the smell of a goat. I need to pour oil on you now. You are there, something you can smell the smell of a goat upon you. I need to pray for you. There is a heart condition God is healing now. You see, when I preach, when I say like, you don't have to joke with the declarations. So. Jesus said to Bafo, go and sin no. Now to sin simply means to do things outside the word of God. That's sin. When God says, don't be, I mean, this don't, I was looking at Psalm 26. It was so sweet. Psalm 26, quickly. No one knows like I know what you've done for me. That's why I praise. Declare me innocent, O oh Lord, for I have acted with integrity. You see, look at the prayer. David was not praying in sin. He was saying that, declare me what? Innocent. For I have acted in, 
I have trusted in the Lord without wavering. That means that things were going bad, but I did not take out my trust in you. I read Psalm 25, verse 3. He said, the Lord will not put to shame those who trust in him. I love that. I circled it under my Bible. The Lord will not put to shame those who trust in him. That means that when you keep your virginity and when you trust in the Lord, maybe somebody decides to give you money. He said, no, I trust that the Lord will provide. In as much as things are tough for my family, I will not bow down on the integrity of God's word. I will trust in the Lord and the Lord will make a way. No one who trusts in you will ever be disgraced. Hey, clap for the powerful word of God. You don't need a young man to have sex with you and buy you a phone. When you trust in God, he will not give you a phone. He will give you grace to dash phones. No one who trusts in God will be put to what? Disgrace. But disgrace. Now, how many want to know disgrace? Where disgrace comes? Read it. Want to go? But. Oh, you are. Oh, you. Anytime you try to deceive others. In other words, anytime you try to lie, you are walking in disgrace. So, you now see why things are not working for you. It's not any devil who. Why are you a smart boy? Chat this boy. Me chat my me and I will tell you. Chat my partner and I will tell you. But I'm smart too. I probably don't want you smarter. I probably be do. I say, hey, I say what you hear, Juma. I say what you hear, work it on. And Juma never want to. But also wicked. Say ti 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 no. It ain't that too too Let me share my confession. I'm confessing. When I completed Jesus, my mom said she go and work. Do you know the work? I was a bad attendant. One month I'm a We were in college more LL. One week I'm a I was at a bad attendant tech year. So when I went, I do know the advice they gave me. The people there. Boy, so smart. The human is so smart. What you say? So do you know what they told me? I was selling secret. God forgive me. My tongue secret now. My bubble will cry. Come here, it's coming, but I'm a gentleman. I'm confessing. You keep your own thing. The Bible says, confess your sins to one another and let them pray for you. So you pray for me. So do you know what I do? I go and buy my own secret pack. I come and sell it first before I sell the woman's own for her. Chat this. One we pepper pepper na miare. And I'm a man before me call you. Because I've never done because I'm going to smoke here. Like I said, I'm going to smoke here. 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 One week, I'm going to smoke here. 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 One week. The first day I attended work. Boy, I'm here. I'm not going to school. Keep on it. To annoy. Oh, bring back my tabia bitters. And she answers. Ah, now you're tabia. I said the one week met you. Saturday morning, page news. You're chilling. You to one wire backup. And I'm just waiting. I'm being cool. I said Friday. Me Jimmy pay. They were paying us every week. Friday. Me Jimmy pay. No. No sooner Saturday. Oh, and they like they give you extra. Me say I'm on fire. They should take it. I don't kill myself. Those who try to deceive others who walk in disgrace. Many of the things we claim the devil is to me, Biara, a fruit of and to me. And Jesus said to the woman, Go and see no. And that's the same thing Jesus is telling you. After he has healed you. Now, how many realize that Jesus delivered the girl from disgrace? Two things. He delivered the girl from being disgraced. Number two, he delivered the lady from being killed. Some of you are so gentle because you are wearing an African wear. And that's why a Christian yama. Who did the oil? I watched a video. A lady went and bought a super glue. Obiaza. Hey! Think Coco. Wako high. Super glue is some say so nipa. Eh? You may think what I'm preaching at. You see, Jesus told the guy, go and see no more so that something worse will not come upon you. Some of you are in church. You are, thinking, you are asking yourself, why are things not going on? Pastor Charles has laid hands upon me. Botanical gardens, I pray. 
Pastor, why is God not answering me? God is not answering because you have not answered him yet. Answer the call of righteousness. The Bible says, guard your heart with all what? That means with every skill, with every knowledge, with every... Guard your heart because out of it comes the issues of life. That means if you will progress in life, it depends on your heart. Don't joke with this thing I'm telling you. Go and see no more. If not, something worse will come upon you. That means there are worse things waiting for sinners. The woman was delivered from what? Death and disgrace. And Jesus told the woman again, go and see no more. Some of us, when we leave church, we go back to our friends, the same old friends again. We go to the club with them. We have sex with them. Some of us can even go for sexual bout rounds. You do things. You break your records. I pray that you will live here with a decision. I pray. That is why from the beginning I quoted James 1.23. Don't listen to the word. Obey. Obey. Don't just listen to what I'm telling you. Obey by walking out from certain places. Listen, can I say this? They are only your roommates but not destiny mates. When you know your destination, you know what will take you there. If you know where you want to get to, you don't follow others. Yeah? There are people who are moving with you now. If you go and search more, they are on assignment to make people foolish as they are. So they get you as innocent as you are and they impart you with foolishness to become like them. There are some guys, smoking is like tabia beaters for them. Massive tabia beaters. What you done for me? Danny? I was so proud of Danny to the point that yesterday I asked her, I said no. She said, Papa, but you are tired. And I said, not at the expense of my son when he celebrated his birthday by preaching at Oforikum. They have the pictures here. Was preaching Jesus. That simply means, to come from people, do you know me? I was the guy who used to do the battles, but Jesus has changed my life. These are the things I want to hear as a shepherd over this commission that after you leave this service, you break out of confusion, you break out of bad relationship, you break out of demonic addiction. Why? Jesus said, go, but don't sin anymore. That means go and prosper, but don't attach sin. Go and do it, but don't attach fornication. Go and succeed in your business, but don't add sin because sin will sink you. What are you preaching? How many realize that you are academically sound until you attach certain things? Yeah. Sin will corrupt you. Sin is like a virus. How many of you did you took your pen drive, went to somebody's a laptop, and you caught virus? Oh, give me a wave. Your laptop didn't have any virus. You only inserted your pen drive on somebody's laptop, which had virus. You ended up having virus, and it corrupted all your file. How many of you lost something because of virus? So do you know what it means? Samson didn't have sex. His head was only on the laps of Delilah. What says it's some of the things something had says. Let me tell you that he said so. Abandon the self for a false and so on. Corrupt. David's son died because of virus. He slept with somebody's wife. He progressed from fornication into a murder. Sin makes you progress from one state to another. Some of you were only bad by saying bad things. Then you graduated to what? Bad friends. From bad friends to bad attitude. From bad attitude to bad place. It still make you progress. Most of you, how addicted you are today, you started as yo, 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 yo. Then you progress. Sin is a progressive. That's what the Bible says. The path of a righteous shine brighter, brighter. That's the same with the path of a sinner shines darker and darker and darker. Go and sin no more. Because when you sin, sickness come. When you sin, disease come. When you sin, disgrace come. So one way to walk out of disgrace without any iota of spirit following you is when you walk out from sin into the presence of God. Now let me say this last thing. Don't know him. That was preaching a tune. I'm going to rapture on that but I used to think like that. God, let me sin. Last hour. A man has sex with a girl on campus, you remember? A married man died on her. You see, one thing you should note, as you look at me, 
If I don't preach to you the truth, I'd rather stop this preaching and become a normal person. If I have made up my mind to be a preacher, I will be like Moses. I will make sure that you don't stay in Egypt. With every power I have within me, I will make sure you don't stay in Egypt. But do you know the truth? As much as I'm making sure that you don't stay in Egypt, the truth is you may not get to the promised land. The man of God is meant to bring you out of Egypt, but it is your character that will take you to the promised land. Because all the people who were taken out of Egypt, they didn't get to Egypt. They didn't get to the promised land. Do you know why? They kept complaining. They were still sinning. And God said, this is why I will wipe them. Only two people entered the promised land. Joshua, Caleb, and other new people. How many want the blessings of God? Oh, how many want the blessings of God? Now, this is Danny. Preaching at the roadside. He, did you take any offering? No, 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 no. And I, I, I was so moved. And I went to the mall. Got him a cake. And we wrote on it, happy birthday, Danny. More pictures. My God. The man in red suit. That means the US Mojan Ebay. Isn't that amazing? This is how he celebrated his birthday. And how people celebrate their birthday by going to the club, popping champagne, popping things, popping things, having sex, fornicate. It's like, you see, I have taught my church members here that birthdays are a transition moment. So switch off your phone and spend more time in prayer. What if I did that, bro? Who in race next and 100 and I say breakthrough? Who be nini? I'm a sister, baby, I'm a sister, I'm a you see how you call your sisters and they don't even pick your call? Very soon you're going to become a big sister. And you see how it is for all your siblings to be calling for money and you don't even have anything because you don't have a job. Life is not easy. Don't add sin. Write it down. Life is not easy. Don't add. Because you will stink and you will sink. Look at Danny with his puppet. With his microphone, singing worship, with his hunger, suit hunger. And the rich play. See, these are the things I want to keep seeing. Spreading the fire. From today, you will change the way you will think. You will ch- Am I prophesying to the right people? You will change the way you celebrate your birthdays. And I was told that Vera went there, Gina went there. So after I preached two hours old, I said, What? Preach? Did I preach like a tired person? Did I even take water? No. Also attempt the same thing on your birthday. Instead of thinking about which party, more, basement, eh? You are already signing signature with Satan. Satan, I'm ready for you to mess my life again in the next coming year. They have started praying into my birthday. Praying. Praying. Last year I was not like this, but this I've become more better person because of... Do you know last year, do you know what they did? They did 12 hour prayer chain for me, 12 hour, continuous, into my birthday. Such a person will I feel in life. Why am I preaching? Why are you listening? Why am I preaching? Why are you listening? There is an investment of eternity into my time. So I don't miss the timing of God. You know, birthday now. Suja, suja. Suja, suja. God can make investment in you, but Satan can take it away from making you commit one sin. And people forget. People have already forgotten about the record she broke. And people are rather thinking about the foolishness she just did. That's what Satan does. Oh, we are saying, Papa, I didn't know. Oh, boy. Why do we sing this? One? I didn't know you favor me this way. And why did you have... Hey, can I say this before we close? No, anyone who ever committed any fornication, any sexual sin, knew that it was going to happen. When a lady is going there, they know that something is going to happen. Because already you know the tonation of which the guy was talking to you. You know, he said, I didn't know. I was just trying to go and check up on him. But when I went, he, he was forcing and I couldn't resist. No, oh, boy. Why didn't you shout? I've also, I didn't want to shout to this crazy. That is also enjoying it. Go and say no. If not something worse. How many of you want worse cases to come upon you? Now, am I the one preaching? Is there a malam? Is there a lecturer? Who spoke those words? How many of you want Jesus to bless you? And how many of you want to obey the words of Jesus? How many of you have been blessed? Maybe next week I will show you the impact of sin. I bow down on my knees. Daddy, where they? Daddy, where they? When I look around, when I look around, I see your faithfulness. Hey. I bow down on my knees, cause now you will be 
Lamentations 1 verse 9. I will, uh, do you know one day somebody said he or she will not listen to the message on fornication because it's too strong. If you don't know the impact of fornication, go and listen to my message. The dangers of fornication, right? Is it dangerous? Is it part one, two, and three? Continue. I read the book of Proverbs and I had more revelation about it. More. Hey, I was shocked. The Bible even, do you know what the Bible says? Don't even pass her, Obano Jananon, that lady stands for men and women. Don't even pass. Now look at this scripture. Lamentations 1 9. Lamentations 1 9. Uh-huh. She defiled herself with immorality. Now, immorality is a defilement, it defiles you. Sexual immorality. Do you know what sexual immorality is? Any sexual activity that is outside marriage is called sexual immorality. Kissing is immorality. The Bible says she defiled herself with what? Immorality. If it was a blessing, Mexico, what should be about the room? Want to go? Want to go? Immorality. Ah. Uh-huh. Punishment that would follow. We no thought of what? Punishment that. That would do what? So something follows your fornication. Who the devil can't be doing it? We the chill, we the pop, pop it. My dear, read it, read it. Want to go? She defiled herself with what? Immorality. With no thought of the punishment. No sex outside marriage is free. No act of immorality outside marriage is free. There is a punishment waiting for you. Enjoy and be punished. Now look at this. She defiled herself. Go to, let me see. Give me the amplified. Amplify. Quickly. Her filthiness was case. Oh, make a best day in me. Listen, read it, read it. Want to go? Was in within her what? Her filthiness was in. And her. So that means what is within the skirt? And what is within the trouser? Now, this guy has to stand. What is within the trouser? What is he trying to protect? Isn't that man would? So the filthiness was in on her. On her. She did not seriously and endlessly consider her final end. She did not seriously and earnestly consider that after I'm having this sex, after I'm kissing, after I'm touching, what will be the end of my action? You did not consider. You were only interested in what I will gain, but were you interested in what you profit from the game? Therefore, she has come down from the throne of slavery, singularly and astonishingly, and she has no comforter. Fornication and immorality makes helpers run away from you. And she cries, oh Lord, look at my what affliction. That affliction stands for sin. And the sin now has an impact on your flesh. Sicknesses. Can I show one of the major ways Satan afflicts human beings? Sickness and disease. His first attempt on the life of Job was what? Boils. Let's read the last one. One to go. Her filthiness was in, was in and on her and she did not seriously and earnestly consider her final end. There is always an end. Don't let that foolish boy make you think that he's going to love you for life. I said, I'm God on the same. I'm God on the same. And now, many, many ladies of today foolishly are foolishly fall for worse. Be I sure. Now, boy, I can yes. Forever you are my dog, baby. Now, you they give me rest. Now, boy, I can so. My daddy, my daddy. My Abigail, my Abigail. Yami, you know what's the sound? It's in, they say, Mamma, echo voice training school because Obasa Antonio Mano. So now I'm messaging you. My daddy, my daddy. Double, double, Antonio. May God deliver you from any sin that will bring disgrace in your life. Any sin that will bring sickness in your life. May the Lord bring you out of it. Lift up your hands and thank God for the word. Listen, I want to lay hands on anyone who is struggling and battling with an addiction to one particular sin. It can be stealing, gaming, any sin. 
I want to lay hands on you quickly. Come. Fornication, any sin you are battling with, I want to lay hands on you and break that power. Over. Don't stand in the front. Begin to break out. Mention it and break out. Begin to break out. I don't like the way you are praying. Break out. Mention that particular act. Is it, is it masturbation? Is it fornication? Is it stealing? Is it lying? Begin to break it. Lord, I break out of sin. I break out and vow sin by the power of the Holy Ghost. Break out of lust. Is it stealing? Is it lust? Any, is it lying? Any sin you are battling with that keeps taking you back. Begin to break it. Clap your hands and break. Come on. Don't sit for Come on. Break it. Break it. Break it. Break it. Break it. Any power of sin. Any power of sin. Say in the name of Jesus. As I clap and pray. Any power of sin. I don't like your prayer. Shout in the name of Jesus. As I clap and pray. By the blood of Jesus. Any power of sin. Against my work with God. As I clap and pray. Break by fire. Clap your hands and pray. Lift up your hands. Those in front. If you battle with lying, come. You can easily lie. It's a spirit. Come. I want to lay hands on you. No, just those in front. Lift up your hands. God is going to deliver you right now. Now lift up your hands to the Holy Spirit. Those standing in front. No matter how strong that sin is, the power of God is going to break it. I'm going to count up to seven. And something will just come out of you. One. Two. Just open your heart. Forget about falling. Three. Having to have enough of going back and forth in God. Four. Five. Break. Now, now. Come out. Break. Lose him. Now. Break. Now. Masturbation is broken. Addiction to pornography. Break. 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 Now. Break. Lose him. As I touch you, power enters. Now. Come out. Now. Go. Go. Now. 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 As you are jumping seven times, you are crossing the limit of sin in your life. Number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. Number six. Number seven. We are going to go again. Any sin that has kept you at one particular place, you don't see any progress in your life, in your academic life, in your moral life. As you are jumping seven times, I declare the chains on your feet be broken. Number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven. Celebrate Jesus. God bless you for listening to this message. May your life never be the same as you have connected to the word of God through his servant, Pastor Charles Sinyaba. Connect with the man of God on Facebook and Instagram at Sinyaba Charles. We believe you've been blessed by this sermon. For inquiries, please call plus 233-267-667-6055. Plus 233-267-6055. Or send an email to info at godswordforus.com. Info at godswordforus.com. Yeah.